How's it going, Reef Keepers? Hope everybody's having a good week. I have a little situation that has developed in the tank. As you can see, everything's doing really well. Coral's flourishing, fish are fat and happy. Um, tank's looking really good. I've got growth going on. It's wonderful. But I have one thing because uh, much like the game of golf, reef keeping is one of those things where like, you know, you get your drivers going, your irons going, your chipping's going great, and then your putting goes, and your putting was awesome all year until that point. You can never just have everything just firing on all cylinders. So um, I have a little Aptasia anemone that has cropped up right here on top of the rockscape. And actually, the situation has improved because it had, I guess, given birth to a little baby that was next to it. But I put a couple of peppermint shrimp in the tank that I got from Top Shelf Aquatics along with those beautiful frags that are all doing very well, by the way. Um, and those uh, peppermint shrimp took out the little nem, but they left the big one. And from what I've read, this is pretty typical. Like peppermint shrimp uh, are an imperfect solution because a lot of times they won't take out the bigger nems. They're just not interested, just a little much for them. Um, they want the little easy pickings. And a lot of times, if you don't feed your tank well, which I feed my tank very well, <laughs> but uh, if you're, if you're kind of going low nutrient and you're not feeding your tank a whole bunch, it will sometimes become an issue with peppermint shrimp because they won't have full bellies. And then they'll start picking at beautiful things like these types of nems, right? Like rock flower nems. And if you've ever had a beautiful rock flower nem, you know that you certainly don't want a peppermint shrimp tearing at the base of it. So um, peppermint shrimp are typically my solution because I don't love the idea of shredding a, an Aptasia anemone and sending particulates all over the tank because when I first started out in the hobby, I had a small tank that got an infestation of Aptasia nems and I stupidly took a scrub brush to those nems and sent particles all over the tank. And you can probably guess what happened next. The whole tank was seeded with all these little pest nems. And I actually had to swap out the rock and kind of restart the tank in a way. I mean, I put the corals back in. And, you know, luckily there wasn't anything growing on the corals or at the base of them. Um, and everything was okay from there. But, uh, yeah, basically my, my thrust when it comes to uh, pest nems is don't panic, right? Seasoned reefers know this. Seas every seasoned reefer has been through something like this or worse, right? Uh, we've all seen it. This is mainly for new reef keepers. New reef keepers, it might seem like the end of the world. Like, oh my God, this, this could become this problem that absolutely takes over my system and ruins this hobby for me. You know, I need to press the big red button. Just relax, right? <laughs> Start doing your research. It's not like overnight these things are going to take over the entire tank, right? They don't go that fast. You have time. Peppermint shrimp are relatively cheap. If you keep the tank well fed, I do suggest them. Um, they don't always work. I've got seen enough an anecdotal evidence for kind of, for lack of a better term, dud peppermint shrimp that don't really do their job or lazy peppermint shrimp, right? Um, but it's a route you can go. Another route you can go as far as livestock is concerned is uh, copper band butterfly, right? Um, I've never had one. They're incredibly difficult to keep alive. I don't really know how many people should be taking on that fish unless they're like a true expert because it is so easy for that beautiful fish to die. Um, and another one is the Aptasia eating file fish, right? But they are known to pick at good things in your tank. They're not exactly known as you know, the most reef safe fish. So, um, livestock approaches to these, the last one would be, and I'm probably going to butcher the name, Bergia nudibranchs, right? So, uh, those are little, are they, are they worms or slugs? I can't remember. Um, I should know that by now, but I don't, uh, they are, they will take out NEMs like this for you. However, there's an asterisk to using them. And that is, if you have one of these fish right here, oh, of course she swims away from me. Um, if you have a wrasse like her, <laughs> see how fast she is? So if you've got a wrasse, uh, you're not gonna wanna go with the nudibranchs, right? If you've got a wrasse, that's gonna be 
you know, a dinner bell the second you put them in the tank. Rass are great. They're beautiful. They're so fun to watch. And they really take care of a ton of pests in your tank for you. But they are actually going to hurt more than they help if you get Aptasia because you can't just kind of use the silver bullet that is Nudibranchs to take them out. Uh, they will eat the nudies. So, unfortunately, you got to watch it if you have a Rass, uh, not waste your money on those. Um, other ways of going about it that are not livestock based. You can use Aptasia X, which I believe you squirt into the mouth of the NEM and it swallows it and dissolves it. I, I've heard, I've not used it myself. I've heard all kinds of reports of like, oh, this made the problem worse because it dissolved particulates everywhere or this totally solved the problem. So, you know, do your own research on that. Um, another thing that you could do is use boiling water that you squirt over it. Um, that, again... That's another one where I've heard people say both, hey, this spread it everywhere, or hey, it was great. Um, there's other products like F Aptasia. I think there's one that's like Harry's, you know, Aptasia Des Destroy Serum or something. There's all kinds of different things like that that you can utilize. I have traditionally stayed away from them because it's such a 50-50 mix of results that I hear from people. I'm not saying you should steer away from them. Do your own research on it. You know, maybe people are doing it wrong and there's a reason why people fail to utilize those products. But um, long story short, Aptasia is no fun. No pest NEM is fun. No pest is fun in your tank. But if you're a new reefer, remain calm, right? It is not the end of the world. You can try out several different options before it gets out of control. And worst case scenario, right? Um, I My fallback position would be throwing a peppermint shrimp in and making sure that your tank is relatively well fed for that peppermint shrimp and just making sure that it cleans up kind of like in my situation here, it cleans up any little ones that start popping up around like the mother nems, right? Therefore, the problem is like contained. Like this problem I would consider right now to be contained unless the scarlet hawkfish picks off the peppermint shrimp, in which case problem not exactly contained, but right now they're, they're seeming to hide pretty well and kind of keep out of range of that scarlet hawkfish. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit of a balancing, balancing act, but, uh, yeah, panicking is not the answer for sure. Totally manageable issue. So, um, all right guys, hope you're having a good week. Just wanted to share and, uh, have a little discussion on that. Have a good one.